What's going on, everybody? Welcome in. It's the Wager Alarm live stream Friday night. Lots to talk about here. I'm Howard Bender. With me here, Craig Mish. Craig, exciting stuff, baby. We got the the super contest. We got college football. You have, uh, man, I tell you, you're 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 off to a nice start, Craig. I'll just say that. How about that? So far, so good. We'll see how it all turns out. This is an awesome week. This is. Uh, hopefully one of my favorite weeks of the uh, NFL and college football season because now you get a full week of college along with the NFL. We have to hope that the, the games this weekend will be better than the one Thursday night. And and that's, <laughs> that, I mean, to be honest with you, that's that was kind of, for me, a lot of last year with the NFL. Hard to find good matchups to watch unless you are playing fantasy football or unless you have a wagering interest in the game, which, of course, we have both. So this will be a fun week to do it. I'm real excited to go through our Super Contest picks. Wager Alarm has an entry in the contest this year. Very excited about that. So what we will do, Howard and I, before the end of the live stream, for those of you who are thinking about betting or doing anything this weekend on Sunday, if you like our picks, feel free to use them. I'll give away some college picks also. And, uh, you know, we'll go over kind of how the Super Contest works. For those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it started really to become mainstream over the last couple of years. And uh, top 100 people who participate and, and place in this will win money. But the, uh, the overall winner is going to win a uh, million dollars. You know, I mean, this is it's going to be a lot of money. Uh, it's, it's a lottery ticket, Howard. There's you know, thousands of entries involved in this thing. It's very difficult uh, because so many people are going to choose the same teams. But we'll go through our reasoning and we'll go through our five picks. Got to make five picks each week. We'll do that before the end of the live stream. Very excited about that. Very excited about making some picks. I, you know, we've been talking about the games. I've been talking about the games all week on Sirius sure. XM, yeah. dealing with the whole fantasy football community. So it's good to just kind of settle in and just talk regular football right now, and like you know, really hit these games uh, against the spread. Let's mm-hmm. start. Col- uh, you know, let's let's save the super contest for the okay. uh, for the last minute. Let's start with some college picks here. Um, we talked a little bit about some lines that we were watching the movement uh, on Tuesday. Um, what are we looking at here? Give me, give me a couple of, a uh, couple of yeah, picks we could that update you're looking them. at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's more or less the same picks that, that, uh, that we were talking about earlier in the week and, and the lines jump out to me. Usually what happens is, and, and now it'll change a little bit because the NFL, we didn't have NFL last Sunday. So when the college lines came out Sunday, it was really easy for me to, to just start looking ahead. And then when we did the live stream on Tuesday, uh, I was really excited uh, about, I mean, there was just some lines that just struck, uh, you know, struck me as as just awesome, awesome value plays. And then we talked about them Tuesday, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to break them down. Um, so I'm going to go with the two picks. We'll start off with two underdogs, South Carolina plus ten against Georgia. Uh, and, and look, when it comes to South Carolina, we talked about this a little earlier. I was waiting for that line to hit ten, and it is. It's at ten now. So here's my feeling on South Carolina. Um, this is, this is like kind of a revenge game, Howard. They haven't been able to beat Georgia in years. This is probably the best South Carolina team we've seen in years. And the Bulldogs lost a lot in the off season. The only question to me is two factors that we talked about Tuesday that we'll talk about in this game for South Carolina to cover the 10 points in this game. They're going to have to do something different than they haven't run in the past, which is a little bit of an up-tempo offense. Now from everything that I'm reading this week, and we talked about this earlier in the week, it is something that they're going to employ tomorrow. Will it work against Georgia? I'm not sure. The other thing in uh, in going back and doing some research is that throughout the season last year for South Carolina and maybe some of the things that they've been critical about the head coach and Will Muschamp is his inability to go forward on fourth down. A lot of times when he's gotten to fourth down and kind of goal situations, five yards or less, he's kicked field goals. You can't do that consistently in college football. There's a lot of points being scored. This isn't like watching Philadelphia and Atlanta on a Thursday night. Teams are going to score 60 points. The total in this game, I think, is like uh, between 50 and 60 points. They're going to have to go for it in these kind of situations. So for me, I'm going to lean toward the plus 10. My first pick this weekend is going to be tomorrow. It's going to be South Carolina at home against Georgia. I think they have a chance to win the game outright, but I will take the points certainly in the SEC getting 10 points at home. If South Carolina doesn't win this game, Howard, it's going to be a disappointment. If they don't cover in this game, it's going to be an epic disappointment for me. So I'll take them as my first. <laughs> Listen, you know what? Considering the way Georgia played last week, I, I 
I'm, I'm with you all in on this one. I like the, uh, I like the rationale. I like the call. I like the fact that Georgia is not the same team that, that we saw last year. A very, very different team, in fact. Um, all right. So South Carolina taking that point plus 10. I like it. Well, I think it was like eight and a half or nine and a half when we were. Uh, it was nine, nine and, and a half. half. It was yeah. Nine and, and, a half and, last and, time. and I was waiting. And, and, you know, I thought that. I thought that it may stay at nine and a half or even go down. It actually went to 10. So the, so the public is not really a believer at this point in, uh, in South Carolina, but I'm okay with that. It, it does feel a little bit trappish getting so many points at home. Like why is it 10? But I, I'm, I'm going to say that South Carolina needs to get off to a good start in this game. I think they will. We'll see some things we haven't seen in a while and a big, big revenge game, I think, for uh, South Carolina in this one. And I think they'll uh, I think they have a chance to win. But obviously, I'm going to take the 10 points. All right. Give me more. Give me more. We were talking uh, on Tuesday about the Michigan State game, Arizona State. They're yeah, getting I'm, six and a half uh-huh. in this one here now, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not getting seven. So online, for those of you who play online, Howard will talk about that in a minute. Um, you can buy points on different websites, uh, depending on how you play. Now, if you're playing with somebody locally, I mean, look, that's between you and the guy that you're playing locally with. What he's going to do is he going to let you buy points. I have no idea. I don't know your guy if that's what you do. Uh, a lot of places online you can buy points. I'm going to buy this to seven. So give me the seven here, and I'll lay minus 125 or minus 130 with Arizona State playing against Michigan State. Okay, so here here's kind of more facts to back up the information without just saying that, oh, it's nice to see Herm Edwards and he's the coach and, you know, says, you know uses every cliche in the book. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to root for that kind of guy. Uh, but <laughs> Michigan State, who, uh, you know, I watched a lot last year, and I thought to myself, this is not a team that looked really good last year, especially when they were on the road. And I went back and I looked and I'm right. So the, the Spartans are 1-8 and eight in their past nine and I'm not big on trends, by the way, but this is one I think that that is appropriate. They're one and eight in their past nine against the spread okay. as a as a visiting favorite with their head coach, Mark D'Antonio, who, by the way, is a really good coach. So basically, here's what this is telling you. Michigan State is good enough to win every game in college football. But when they're laying a number as a road favorite, they don't cover a lot. And I think this could be one of those situations. Uh, Arizona State had nine sacks last week. Michigan State's offensive line's a little bit banged up. I I want the seven points here. I think there's a chance Arizona State, a late night Saturday game, not for you, for me, a late night Saturday game on the East Coast, <laughs> an opportunity maybe for them to win this game. We know that Michigan State loves to run the ball. That also plays into a spread kind of situation. I'm going to take ASU, and I'm going to take the points also in this game Saturday night. This is a little bit dangerous here because Michigan State's definitely the better football team. They didn't look good last week. They got to travel cross-country on the road, giving points on the road where they haven't been all that successful against the spread. So give me Arizona State for pick number two plus seven. Okay, as long as you but you have to be buying that half point in there. You don't want to stick I mean, look, there, you're, there's going to be places, Howard, where you're not going to be able to buy that point, you know, half point. There are sites mm-hmm. out there that just won't let you do it. And remember, I'm not always an advocate for buying points because you're going to be laying more juice. And if you lose, it's almost sometimes like losing two games in one or at least a game and a half in one. But for people who are savvy, who know how to do this, to find the value. And again, let's say hypothetically, the world is going to change. By the time we're talking about this next year, you in California will be able to, you know, on, in Half Moon Bay can make a bet. OK, I mean, you're going to be able to do it, not just online, but in local casinos. So you know, what I always tell people is not everybody has the opportunity to be in Las Vegas. But let's say hypothetically you were going to bet 50 or 100 dollars on a game. OK, well, in that case, Howard, does it really matter? It's not going to change your life one way or the other. A six and a half, seven, uh, seven point spread. But let's say. You, you you felt great about something. Let's say you were going to bet $500, Howard, on a game, or you were going to bet $1,000 on a game, and with your buddies in Vegas. Well, you know, take an Uber to the next casino. See what the line is there. Make some calls. Maybe you're getting that seven somewhere else where you're getting six and a half where you're sitting. Take the extra five minutes. I mean, it is the difference when you're wagering on sports and you're wagering over the course of, let's say, 100 games. Well, you're going to, you know, there's there's 50 wins in there. It's just like a Major League Baseball team. Every Major League Baseball team is going to win 60 games. It's just a matter of how close you get in that higher percentage, and it can change your percentage of winning somewhere between 5 and 10%, sometimes on a point or a half a point. Make the extra effort and try to get yourself that extra point at 7, because if Michigan State wins 
Saturday night, 24 to 17, and you're sitting on six and a half, you lose. <laughs> so get yourself that push if you possibly can. Okay, I can dig that. I like can dig that. No. Contest, we're not buying anything. We got to go with what the lines they are. We'll get to that in a minute. But you, you, you have the ability on some of these sites to move money and move points. I'm never moving points on five or or eight and a half. I mean, you're playing those games, but when you can get that on the number on a seven or a six, you got to try. I can dig it. I can dig it. All right, give me one more. Let's do a third college game for everybody. Somebody you really like, and then let's get to the NFL. Okay, so this is another rivalry game, and, and I'll try to stick with the marquee games at least for the early live streams that we're doing. As we dig deeper into the season, there may not be as value games with the conference games because Vegas is very aware of all these games. We'll try and find some some uh, some small school gems. But for now, we'll go with the third game. This is Stanford and USC. Uh, USC, as as you know, Howard, their quarterback last year is now the quarterback of the Jets, Sam Darnold. Okay, so he is gone. And they have a freshman quarterback now who they really like a lot. Stanford is minus six and a half in this game. So we had a six and a half getting points. This is one where we're going to lay six and a half points. You can buy a half and get it down to six if you wanted to. But I'm going to leave it be at six and a half on this one. Another big revenge factor here. That's very big in college. It's not so much in the pros. But in college, there's a revenge factor. And I'll tell you why. Last year, uh, USC played Stanford during the regular season. And USC won. And then they played each other in the championship game, and then USC won again. So two out of you know you play a team twice and you lose. Stanford wants this game and they want it bad. That does factor it in college. When I say want it, NFL throw it out. Uh, Bryce Love, who in fantasy football next year is going to be the Barkley of this year. He'll be he'll be one of the top probably the top running back drafted. One of the top rookies in fantasy football. Um, two eighty five on the ground last year against USC in two games. They end up losing twice. Stanford was not a great team last year. They had a down year. They'll be back this year uh, against the spread. USC is one of those public teams like we talk about, like Notre Dame, like the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of teams on the West Coast, they just bet USC. 17 wins, 24 losses, and one push. USC against the spread in their last in the last 42 games. That's not good. That's below 500 betting on USC. I'm going to take Stanford in this one, and I'm going to lay the points. So two underdogs, one favorite for Saturday. Just to review the three picks, we're going to go with Arizona State plus the points. We're going to go with Stanford minus six and a half. And, um, and we're going to take South Carolina plus a 10. Those are the three for tomorrow. I like it. I like it. And if you can bet, if you can buy that extra half point there for Arizona State, you'd be more inclined to, to do that. I would, than just and leave even it with Stanford, too, I probably would. But it's not as vital for me as it is okay. for the uh, Arizona. I mean, I want all the points I can get against Michigan State at home. And Arizona State is, I mean, look, I mean, new coach. This isn't a team. Like, if, if you go back and say who's been in the BCS championship when they had that, who's been in the playoff, has, has Arizona State even been good over the last decade? Not really. So this is a big, big game for that school at home. New coach, new attitude. I mean, are they going to get blown out? I don't see it, man. I'm, I'm going to take the points there. So that, that right. covers for us this week. Beautiful. Oof. I love it. So that's for great. college, there you go, guys. That's We're telling you who to bet. Now the question is, is who should you bet with? All right. When you play and win, you need to get paid. So that's where mybookie.com comes in. Go to fantasyalarm.com slash mybookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. All right. Use the promo code alarm for dollar to dollar match deposit. That's right. They will match your deposit dollar for dollar. With promo code alarm. So fantasyalarm.com slash mybookie. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. All right. Now let's talk about uh, NFL. Now before we get to like specific games here, Craig, and we, before we start giving up our, uh, our super contest uh, selections, talk to me about strategy-wise going in. Like I sit here and I crunch the numbers and, and, and look at this stuff, but year to year data does not technically work in the NFL. It does in some situations, but for the most part, you've got so much player turnover. You have so many coaching, ter- you know, coaching jobs change, different schemes are implemented. Um, and so with all of that, it's kind of tough when you look at week one, because, you know, last year, listen, last year I made it hitting every tight end every single week. Every yeah, you were, the, week, you were the tight end whisperer. I, remember I that. was. So, like, every tight end, you know, every, and, and it just got easier and easier and easier for me because I just kept seeing the data roll in, checking the matchups, looking at the injury reports, everything like that, and I was mm-hmm. able to hit every single week. 
coming into week one, well, yeah, I know who was weak against the tight end last year. Do I know who's weak against the tight end this year? Right. It's it's kind of a different it's a different story. It's a different it is situation. it is and some and listen, I think that you would admit um, just just as much as as you did a good job, I think that you would admit that some of it is getting lucky too. You know, sure. Some so, sure, some, sure, some sure. of it is maybe not all of it, but you 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 what we would say is you had a knack for finding the tight end last year. You had data and you had empirical data and analysis that you used to incorporate into your fantasy analysis, which is why Fantasy Alarm is so great at what they do, led by you. But there is luck involved in it. Um, you know, and, and and that's just that's just a fact. You know, you you can't there's there's always going to be a percentage of that with it, which is why um, you know, it's important to to go with the data and go with the information that you're given in fantasy football, but it's also important to also go with hunches. I mean, that's just what it is. And 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 you can, you know, stand on the flagpole and say, hey, I, I got it right. But inevitably we really don't know uh, you know, some of what's going to happen in these games. And just like Come picking on, the t- I knew Tyler Higby would catch one touchdown for one yard. I right. knew just, that. It, it, just, it happens, and, and, you, <laughs> and you get the credit for it. Just like when we talk fantasy and baseball, it's the same thing. Right. You make your predictions at the beginning of the season, and you hope that they pan out. You hope you're more right than you are wrong. But the ridiculousness that I see with people, you know, with, with, with all this kind of stuff is insane. Um, in, in gambling and in handicapping, if you're winning more than you're losing and you're winning at a percentage between 55 and, dare I say, 65 percent over the course of, uh, you know, a season, you're doing very well doing this. Now, the whole key is obviously if you're betting the same amounts, you're not really going to win a lot of money. So what you would probably do is is try to, you know, put down units and have a unit structure. Now, what we're doing and when we're talking about the NFL is we're talking about the super contest for these purposes. Now within the super contest games and out of the five that we choose, and we could also do some totals too. I could give you some you know thoughts on that as well is that we're not doing this in units. The super contest is strictly a contest in Las Vegas at the Westgate hotel and resort where you enter and you put money down and you against 1,999 of your best friends try and fight it out at the end of the season to have the best record. Uh, people think it's easy. Oh, well, if, you know, if I only have to pick five games out of all of them, I could do very well. Well, as we <laughs> talked about, the five most picked games every week in the Super Contest lose. Let me say that again. The five most picked games among everybody who's participating in this contest, they all lose. And they all lose every single week. Why? Because the most obvious picks in the NFL are public games and they fail. And they fail consistently. Now, maybe that changes this year. Every year is different. But what I've seen in the last, let's just say, two years intensely is basically the consensus picks, which will be released tomorrow afternoon. And you can find them uh, online. Just, you know, Google consensus super contest picks tomorrow late in the afternoon. And they all get posted. Some people have said you should just bet against those consensus picks. You know what? May may not be a bad idea. But for our purposes, <laughs> uh, Howard and I's consensus is basically going through these games, handicapping them, and then pick the five, and then we'll see how we do next week. In fact, uh, you know, you'll have Howard uh, a picture of the ticket of our ticket for Wager Alarm. We can post it if you want on the site, or you can post it on your Twitter handle or whatever. We'll show everybody the five picks that we got. And we'll track our picks over the course of the whole season. Let's cross our fingers that we don't go zero and five or one and four in week one. Hopefully, we'll do very well. Uh, what what have I picked up on trends so far? I don't think there's anything to start a season. You never know how any team's going to be in the NFL. We know New England's going to be very good. I mean, that's what we know. Beyond that, it's you know we think Minnesota's going to be good. We think Green Bay is good. We think Arizona's bad. Seattle's bad. The Dolphins probably too. But when they line up. Strange things happen in the NFL. The only thing that I could say that if you're looking at betting week one, if there's one trend that I would pick from Thursday night to go into this weekend is it does look like the lack of preseason time for a lot of these teams may be costing you. So how do you take advantage of that data? You bet unders in the NFL, unders on the totals, but maybe not even betting unders, Howard. Maybe it's just betting unders in the first half of these games, like in baseball, how you would bet a pitcher in the first five innings because you like the starter. Maybe here in this, what you would do is you take half of what the total is and you bet under that in the first half. Now, I don't know. Maybe Sunday comes and everybody's scoring points. It just doesn't seem like the preseason has lent itself to a lot of high scoring games. 
So out of the 15 games that we're going to see, we'll judge it next week and see how many of these totals ended up going under. But my guess is there will be more unders than overs at the end of the week. But if it's only one more under than over, you'll end up losing money by betting all of those. So you have to identify which of those games will go under. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, you want to start here with uh, with the first pick? Or the, let's or, do uh, it. Let's, how, let's how roll through it, it, baby. How do I want to do it? Do you want to go? We can go game by game or we can just talk about the five that we like, however let's you want to do, do it. I think let's do the five for time let's purposes. Do, yeah, let's do the five that we like. Okay. And that means we're starting off with uh, with Bengals, Colts. Those Colts uh, are the first game we're going to pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we're looking at the uh, the, the Bengals. We're gonna take Cincinnati in this one. We're gonna take the points and the plus points. three, and and I and there is there is no uh, trendy data to give out here. There is no uh, you know super reasoning behind it, um, except for everything that you guys are probably thinking to yourself. Okay, so the Bengals uh, are at Indianapolis, and they are getting three points, which means Indianapolis has no home field advantage. That's what Las Vegas is telling you. They, they're just getting those three points because when you're at home, you get three points. That's what they get. It tells you that the teams are even in their mind. But I think the narrative that I would play here, Howard, is the very easy one that a lot of other people will play too. You don't know what Andrew Luck is going to be. You have no idea. No one has any idea. He hasn't thrown deep in games. He hasn't thrown deep in practices. We haven't seen a lot of him uh, at all in the preseason. Uh, the Bengals are not a great team, but I think they're better than Indianapolis. I think they are a better team. And so if this is a 17-16 game, you win no matter what. And I think there's a good chance the Bengals end up winning this game. I think luck as the season goes on will probably be okay. And who knows? Maybe he comes out and he throws for 400 yards. But, you know, Frank Reich will probably do the same thing what we saw last night in Philadelphia with moving all these running backs in and out. Uh, I'm not really sure what Marlon Mack is or what Wilkins is or the other guy. Well, Mark. here you go. You know, Marlon Mack dealing with a hamstring injury, probably going to either not play or see limited touches. They're going to mix in Naeem Hines Who with Jordan Wilkins. Exactly. I, I, I watch college football. Exactly. I'm not really that familiar. So, so, and, and then, the, you know, they have the one reliable guy in terms of receiver in, in, uh, in Hilton. Their right. defense in Indianapolis was nothing fantastic. Oh, and, no, it's terrible, and the secondary's actually gotten worse. And the Bengals are, like, you know, they're a 500 team. They're a seasoned team. You know who they have at running back. You know who they have at receiver. Their defense is always pretty solid. Their quarterback can play a safe, conservative game, or he could throw for 300 yards. There isn't really anything here for me to say except for – the number just speaks to their two teams. They're even and on an even playing field with a home field advantage, slightly going to Indianapolis. And again, not knowing what luck is going to be, I'm going to take uh, and we'll take the Bengals in this one. We'll take the Bengals. We don't need them to win. All they need to do is cover and uh, and we'll see what happens on Sunday. So I kind of like that first one. All right. Second one that we're taking. Uh, we're laying seven and a half, taking the Ravens over Buffalo. I think this is this is probably the biggest no brainer right here, right? I mean, well, Buffalo's I mean, we'll get atrocious. Will win, you know, but but it does, it, it, you know, I just how amongst all of the games, that's the key here. And and again, if you're going to bet this game, we could talk about the difference in betting the game versus using it in the super contest. You have your choice of the 15 games, and we didn't use Thursday night, so now we're down to 14. It looks like this is a game that you have to go with. I mean, the Ravens are going to win this game. The only question is, is are they going to win by seven, seven and a half? I mean, is there a chance that Peterman comes out and he's everything that we didn't know? You, you never know with these things. Sometimes when these, you know, like a Deshaun Watson comes out of nowhere and, and leads his team in. But I think that Peterman's more like savage than he is like Watson. And the Ravens were five and oh in the preseason. I know that doesn't mean a lot, but it means something. Baltimore's a good team. Maybe this game is close at the half because the Ravens don't usually set the world on fire. But you're right, Howard. I think you look at this, you don't overthink this one, and you just take Baltimore. And and and, and, it, and you know what's going to happen is this is probably going to be a consensus pick tomorrow. So we'll see how that works out. Maybe we'll lose. But um, I'll, I'll, I'm totally in agreement with you on Baltimore. All right. Next game we're looking at. And we actually talked about this one uh, a lot, actually, on Tuesday's live stream. Talking about the uh, the spread between the Saints and the Buccaneers, it's nine and a half. It's still not. It's it is nine and a half for us here. We're taking the Buccaneers and the points. Yeah, and this is one of those that it's very easy, just like it is, to look at Baltimore and say, 
you know, this is a guaranteed win for the Saints. And by the way, I agree. I do think the Saints will win. But on week one of the NFL season where things are unpredictable and you're getting nine and a half points in this game, that's just too much in any NFL game in week one. Uh, you know, Tampa Bay has played competitive against New Orleans in the past. I do think the Saints are a good team. But at the same time, I'm all about points in the early part of the season when you really don't know what the teams are going to be. Remember, this isn't tanking week 12 when a team is one in 10 or one in 11 and they're out of it. Every team in week one, they have that optimism that they think that they can still compete. I, I don't think that the Saints are the kind of team that's going to smack you in the mouth. Uh, they don't have Ingram there. That would make me feel a little bit differently about this because they could just literally run Ingram up the gut like a million times. Uh, you know, Brent Grimes is out for Tampa. Is that a big injury for them? I'm not so sure. Uh, you know, the, the Saints receiving core, a lot different than what it's looked like in years past. Of course, you have Michael Thomas there, but who are those other guys that he's going to be throwing to? Is it going to be Meredith? Is it going to be uh, the rookie? I forget his name. Trey Quan, right? Is his first Trey name? Trey Quan Smith. Yeah, Trey Quan Smith. Yeah. Again, you yeah, know, I mean, they haven't had a lot of time to work themselves out. You know, Tampa Bay has known that Fitzpatrick is going to be the quarterback. It's an ugly looking pick. And here's the reason why I like the pick. It looks bad. It looks it looks like a terrible pick. And in the NFL, when things look like they can't happen, you got to go that side again. If Baltimore was uh, was nine and a half point favorites, I don't think that I would touch that game. It would make me feel really nervous. Yeah, you're probably right. They'd blow them out. Uh, I like Baltimore only laying that seven and a half, and we're going to take a shot here. You got to take a dog in week one. The Bucks, I think, are a live dog for week one. All right. Uh, next game we're taking. Uh, I, I like this one, man. I mean, Chargers over the Chiefs laying three and a half. I don't like the half point sitting there in there, especially <laughs> That's if the I, thing. That's the only troublesome thing. I think the pick is good. That's the only worry for me is that little hook there, that half. Yeah, that half point there, considering it is a divisional game. However, I look at that that secondary for the Chiefs. I look at the fact that Eric Berry's already out, that Marcus Peters is gone. I look at the Chargers secondary. Now, Patrick Mahomes got a great arm, absolutely, but he's also made a ton of mistakes. He's thrown a lot of interceptions in the preseason. He threw a lot of interceptions in college. Fine, Joey Bosa is not going to be in there on the pass rush. Is that the end of the Chargers defense? No, I don't think so. So when I look at a soft secondary for the Chiefs, I look at a strong secondary and, and uh, front seven for the Chargers. I like the Chargers. I'm going to lay the points at home here. And yes, I don't like that half, but I'm going to take it anyway. Yeah, I mean, no Alex Smith, so you don't know what Mahomes is going to be. If Alex Smith was there, I would not bet this game. I would not use this game. The other thing that, that also it tells you is, again, uh, the Chargers, San Diego, the Chargers have no home field advantage whatsoever. And the Chargers, in some places, are one of the top teams in the AFC as predicted to go to the Super Bowl. There's a lot of people who really like this team a lot, who think they have great offensive firepower and a good defense as well. We know their kicking situation is going to be better than it was last year. It can't be worse. And, and, and Kansas City is a little bit of an unknown. So um, so if the Chargers were in a place where they had 40,000 fans screaming for them, this line should be four and a half or five. But it's not because of that factor. So if you feel that the Chargers are the better team, then you lay the three and a half points and you take them. So we'll go with our third pick, third pick being the uh, Chargers. All right. Last pick, number five here. Oh, is that the fourth pick we already did? That was the fourth pick. Oh, was it? Okay. My it bad. was. Wow. Yeah, because we're going Bengals, we're going Ravens, gotcha. we're going Buccaneers, mm -hmm. we're going Chargers. And who do we got? And Mish, we're going Broncos, baby. Yeah, this We've been talking about this game board. for a while. Come this on. Is, I was hoping to get two and a half here because, the, because there was some money on Seattle earlier in the week. But right now it looks like if you want to bet this game and you want to take uh, Denver, and I hate taking four out of five favorites too, uh, but if you're going to take Denver – then you probably have to do it now because I think this is going to go to three and a half. I just don't like Seattle at all. I don't like them this season. Um, not just not a fan. I saw a stat the other day that was used uh, that the, the um, I don't know if the Broncos were dead last in terms of quarterback efficiency in the NFL last year, but their quarterbacks averaged five yards per pass last year. And yeah. Case Keenum averages over six. So think about that. Keenum is one yard per pass better 
And that's every time he passes the ball. That's not over the course of just one yard for the whole game. So you're getting an extra yard each time. That's a third and nine. That's a first down. Second and six. Let's get seven yards. That's a first down. And Keenum's a pretty good quarterback. They had no one last year. The Broncos at home are usually very good betting propositions. It's just they had such a dismal year last year that the public isn't really willing to give them an opportunity. I think some money will even be on Seattle in this one. I don't like it. I like Denver in this game, and it's one of my favorite plays of the week. All right, there you go. See, that's what I like to hear. All right, so it's three favorites, two dogs, actually. The two dogs that we're taking are the Bengals and the Bucks. Um, is there another dog? Is there another dog that you're looking at that you can make the argument for? Because listen, oh, I uh, again, I don't like the three and a half from the Chiefs, but I think the Chargers are, are, are a much better team, which is why I'm taking it. If you've got a dog that you like, tell me. I, I won't do my Jets. Don't even no, look no, at no, my no. Jets. No, we definitely are not taking the Jets. <laughs> um, the Raiders a little bit, maybe. I mean, you know, what's happened is with the Raiders, the, the reason why is because of, again, value, Howard. Everybody in the world's now against the Raiders, right? Oh, they traded Khalil Mack and and Gruden doesn't know what he's doing. And it's Lynch. He's 100 years old, which is true. And And so because of that, that's the public perception groundswell against the Raiders. That's when you get the value. You come back and you take Oakland at that point. Because it's against them. Um, and again, if the Rams are so good, Howard, why are they only four-point favorites? Why are they only four? I mean, aren't aren't the Rams supposed to be a potential NFC representative? And, and maybe the team that's going to go to the Super Bowl? They're only four-point favorites. The line tells you it's the Raiders in this game. So if there was one more that I would add, it would be them. I want to believe that the Bears... Uh, you know, can hang with the Packers. But this line is telling you Green Bay. I mean, the, if this is the – the Packers may blow them out in this game because that's what the line is saying. But I kind of I kind of look at Oakland and say if, 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 if the Rams are supposed to be this team that's going to get to the Super Bowl and they're supposed to be so good, this line should be five or six. It should be more, maybe even a touchdown if the Raiders are so bad. But it's kind of telling you, you know, maybe not. Maybe this is a close game that comes down to the wire. Is this telling you that it's – Better that do you, do you prefer it? Do you, because I mean, listen, I, hey, I'm, I the one, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one who I, took the charge. Under the sky, so, but but I think that I think that we. I, I don't ever want to change, and we just gave out our pick, so I think we should stick with the five. I think we should stick with the five. Uh, we got because what I don't want to do is I don't want to look back uh, after this is over and San Diego and San Diego and the Chargers win by seven, and we go, oh, we should have kept them in. You never do that. You go with the first five picks that you choose, and we stick with it, and we go from there. But I think it's fair to say for people who are watching that if there was a sixth pick, it would be the Raiders on Monday night. It would it would be, it would be them only because of the line. And again, I love those contrarian plays like in DFS. The Raiders are kind of a contrarian play because everyone is going to take the Rams. I mean, the Rams look like the easiest pick here. Oh, four points, Rams. Oh, it's got to be. They're great. You know, Las Vegas wants the action on both sides. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Well, there you go, guys. That's our super contest picks for the week here. Um, we'll check in on Tuesday. We'll tell you how it went down. And uh, I don't know. Either pick up the pieces or be popping bottles, baby. Are we popping bottles, Mish? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I just want a good, good start. You know, get off to the – I mean, and, and September's so unpredictable with some of this stuff mm -hmm. because – what we're going to what's going to happen is like the Browns are going to be like 14 and two. I know it sounds crazy. There's going to be some team that's going to be much better than we thought and much worse than we thought this year. And it, and you got to try to identify that early on in the season and find those teams that I mean, the coach in the NFL does tend to make more of a difference than the manager, for example, in uh, in Major League Baseball or even the coach in the NBA, like the, the coaching uh, decisions that those guys make both in college and pro football do factor in. And you wonder which players and what teams are going to be playing hard for their coaches and which ones that don't really care. I mean, you saw that play out, I think, even especially with the Colts last year. I mean, Chuck Pagano's a very nice guy. I'm sorry he went through what he you know went through physically over the but you just kind of could tell the Colts were just like a beaten team. And there's some of these teams that don't get up for their coaches. And so that's something that I look at also in the early part of the season, because then I know that later on in the season, um, you know, you know, things are going to change. And, and, and I, and I just, 
I can't wait to get these things, uh, th- this thing started, both tomorrow and Sunday. It's, it's, I, I just hope the games are good, Howard. I mean, that's what I hope for here, because last year was such a, a drag. <laughs> so many bad games. <laughs> it was. All right. Well, guys, there you go. That's it for us from Wager Alarm. Remember, if you're into fantasy sports and you're dealing with your fantasy football team and you're watching this through Wager Alarm, don't forget Fantasy Alarm. Go fantasyalarm.com slash bender. Get the entire NFL season, seasonal and DFS, 75 bucks. That's it. 75 bucks. It's ridiculous. They'll pay. F- we'll, we'll, we'll pay for it within the first, like, week of DFS play. So enjoy it. Thanks very much for stopping by. Good luck in your contests. Enjoy your games. Craig, be good. All right, thanks.